welcome to Devils in the Details. I'm joined today by Margaret Kalachi and Judy Karshmer, and we're talking about nursing simulation um, and how we have moved to remote learning. Maybe we could start with Dean Karshmer. Judy, could you share the challenges you're having with having enough nurses? Well, you know, um, obviously, um, the acute need for nurses and health professionals is uh, being felt everywhere. Um, and uh, since that's our business, Business to prepare the next generation of nurses and um, health professionals. It's been quite the um, challenge to provide the experiences that they need so when they graduate, they're able to do the work that's so necessary. So um, when everything's shut down, well, we didn't shut down, but when everything shifted in March, um, what happened here in the college was um, Mary, Margaret, uh, who is the director of our Grace Center for Simulation, stepped right in and um, was able to pivot and take what were in-person clinical experiences in our simulation center and make them virtual. It was literally within 24 hours, and there was not a student who didn't finish out the semester. There was not a student who didn't graduate. There was not a student who wasn't able to meet the expectations for preparing as a new nurse so he and she could go on and be the nurses of the future. No, that's really amazing. Um, Margaret, could you paint a picture for us of the nursing simulation lab and how, how nursing students learned before the pandemic hit? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so our nursing lab is a series of five simulation suites, which include both outpatient and inpatient uh, realistic healthcare environments. So we use uh, both uh, standardized patients, which are trans, um, trained actors, uh, or uh, simulation mannequins, which are high fidelity computers that can function all the physiological um, pieces of, of a human being. And so the students get that hands-on practice where they can assess a patient, uh, practice critical thinking, uh, clinical reasoning, teamwork, communication, all in a safe um, and psychologically safe learning environment so they can make mistakes and learn from them. Um, and then you had to move to remote learning, you know, Judy was saying basically overnight. Um, um, you know, everything changed and you still had to teach. How big a challenge was that? What did that look like? So uh, I think we knew this was going to happen at some point. We just didn't know how quickly it would occur. So um, the week of March break, we had been kind of um, playing with ideas of, of how this might transpire. And so it actually occurred on um, Monday after a few meetings with um, Judy and other team members, uh, other directors, we decided about 6.30 or 7 o'clock that night that we would be ready for a 6 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. training for faculty to be ready by 7.30 the next day. So it was um, getting everybody up on Zoom. It was uh, converting things to a, a more visual platform instead of that hands-on, um, but it was the same learning, and, and we were blessed to have good instructional design so we could use the components of our um, in-person activities with our online activities. Could you tell us a little bit more about how you'll use the lessons in the future in educating nurses that you learned in this quick pivot time? So for the future, this opens up a wide array of, of opportunity for how we present education and experiential education. Traditionally, it was a hands-on, high-touch uh, emotional connection with your patients. Then we moved to a simulation where we could actually um, develop that same feel. And now it opens up virtual reality and AI and, and other things that ASU is so strong in. And I, I'm looking forward to the collaborations of, of those areas. and. Um, and figuring out how to do this for remote education to our rural populations and global. Absolutely, the, the technology has really opened up a lot of opportunities, you know, or opened our eyes to opportunities to reaching underserved communities, both in terms of education and in terms of healthcare, you know, providing telemedicine and others. Um, so I think going forward, Dean Judy, <laughs> Has that sh shifted your thoughts on how you'll provide nursing care in the future or nursing education in the future? We, 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 we smi I'm smiling because um, we've been talking about how do we take nursing pre licensure nursing education to, to the learner. We've been talking about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
we did it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, one of one of our colleagues said, you know, uh, Judy, we could have had meetings for a year and a half and never gotten off the dime. So here we did it. And now I think everybody's, oh, we could really start, just as Margaret said, take our um, experiential learning to the learner, whether it's pre-licensure or even our nurse practitioner students who were able to do telehealth um, it, um, virtual examinations, uh, you know, with, with, and could do so in, re in real time with real people. So, wow, we can take um, high quality nursing education to a lot of places and that's gonna make all the difference. So basically you were always ready for a pandemic. So uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yes. No. Um, you know, always contingency, and that's the beauty of experiential learning is right. to learn by doing. And so, mm -hmm. um, our our vision statement is knowledge and action join as one. And here we went with that, uh, all in. <laughs> I appreciate the honesty. Um, yeah, I think you were prepared in a lot of ways, though. Realistically, I mean, there are times in your life where you've had to pivot really quickly. Um, you know, maybe you could share about that. I, I know that you served during the Gulf War, and thank you for that. Sure. And tell me a little bit about how that prepared you. Yes, so I was a uh, Army nurse, um, a young lieutenant in the Gulf War, and so I was stationed at Launchdool, which is the regional um, uh, transition point from the Gulf to Europe to uh, uh, the United States. And so we converted, um, we had a hospital of about 300 beds, and we converted overnight well, I say overnight, it was about probably two days worth, but uh, over to a thousand beds or so, um, converting clinics into um, fully operational um, situations. So it had that same feel. Uh, it had that same urgency, that crisis management rush um, to get it done. This really has felt like a marshalling of forces kind of situation, you know, a, a wartime kind of um, set up and and how did that help you prepare? Is that a, a big I, I part think, of? I think many people have um, have had that sense of this is war and and I think building trust. Uh, Judy certainly had trusted me. Whether I could do this or not was you know um, remained to be seen. But I, I think that level of trust within the team, within the college, within the university to just make it happen and, and do whatever you can to continue the students learning because in the end, if the students can continue, then, then we didn't need to be there either. And this is you know, almost 350 students who also pivoted you know, virtually overnight to this. Um, you know, either one, maybe Judy, tell me a little bit about what that looked like for you. And, and personally, I'd be proud, right? Uh, the, oh, I'm bursting. <laughs> I'm very uh, It was, um, it was, and people did it with a happy heart. This is the other mm -hmm. part. There was not people saying, uh, drudge. They were saying, we are in this um, to help make sure our students are successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will, um, we'll, we'll, we don't have full information. And no one was complaining about that. They said, well, we'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. And um, the students included. I mean, the students showing up in their uniforms, ready to go at, uh, you know, on a moment's notice. I, I think that for, there was no grumbling. There was just a can-do attitude. So yes, I'm very proud. Um, and very proud of the fact that we're learning so much from this experience that we're going to be able to incorporate moving forward that's only going to make our nursing education better and a mm -hmm. uh, better prepared nurse, not just for crises, but for, um, how, how do we best prepare that nurse? Mm -hmm. What did this experience tell you, Margaret, about your students and the faculty? You know, maybe your favorite moment. Uh, <laughs> it could be a, a, a failure or a success, I suppose. <laughs> uh, I think for the faculty, it was the, the shock and awe of, mm -hmm. of getting it done. Um, the second or third week was much better than the first week, I have to admit. Uh, we got our Zoom skills up. There are many things that you can do on Zoom that we had no idea of on the first day. On the first day, again, we were doing kind of a combination of in-person plus Zoom plus um, some other things. And I think for our students, it was just the gratitude. They were so yeah. happy to keep learning, to have some normalcy in their life. 
And I think that's really important for a student who is extremely stressed, is, is shelling out lots of money to have an education so that they're prepared. And, and just the gratitude and, and understanding of what this took, they really appreciated mm -hmm. uh, what, what I can see great. that. I mean, it's, I, you're in a, a much more dire kind of situation with your students and making sure that they're prepared to go right into that workforce. And there are particular challenges in a pandemic. And what is that? Tell me a little bit about the communication or what you told them as you fledged them into this pretty serious, I mean, very serious, you know, a life um, threatening kind of work that they're doing. Every day we read in the paper about um, our colleagues that are on the front line of going into hospitals, taking care of very ill patients, mm -hmm. and then having to come home and take care of their families. And that stress and that burnout for a nurse is very real for every, every, all the frontline health professionals. Mm -hmm. um, and I think our students know that, but I think this reminded them that this is this is not um, this is not uh, child's play. This is serious business, mm -hmm. and I think the compassion that they felt from faculty is exactly the compassion that is going to be alive and well as they take care of patients in the future. Mm -hmm. So um, it reminded us, I think all this is very real, and um, the work we do, although joyful, also is very serious. Mm -hmm. And very important. Uh, joyful is a good word. Yeah. I also think uh, opportunity. So mm -hmm. like no other time have these students really had to take what they've, they've developed, take their professional identity and make a difference. They, they will make a difference from day one as soon as they are, are on a ship, not even you know, into their orientations. They'll be ready to go. They will be um, making a difference. In, in people's lives and and to have that intimacy that's that's something that is really important in nursing and the, the heart the resilience mm -hmm. the joy and the, the struggles so that's really amazing what else would you like people to know about the work that you've done or your students Judy or you know I, I, I would like one of the the, the sort of um, premises of the work that uh, Margaret and her team does in the Grace Center is that we really have been using simulations for quite some time yeah. to help the nurse, the, the, the student step into real patient situations. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've taken it to the next level that we've said, okay, we can do not only simulations, but virtual simulations. We can help people be prepared through a variety of ways. Um, and I think that's one thing that ASU does well is this, this changing, um, you know, immersion classes, experiential mm -hmm. classes, online classes, ASU sync classes. I, I, I want people to realize that um, we take very seriously that the work we do is part of promoting the health care of our communities and our graduates are going to be there. That's wonderful. I appreciate you both so much and, um, and, and joining us today for Devils in the Details. And thank you, Margaret, and thank you, Judy, for all that you're doing and all that you're doing for our students and for our community. We wouldn't be able to do this work without Margaret doing this kind of leadership. Thank you, Margaret. No, thank absolutely. you, Judy. And thank you, Mia, for the opportunity to present our story. It's, it's, um, it's meaningful. Yes. Thank you so much.